We are going to look at some pretty blooms and also I'm going to be explaining myself as to my thought process on which orchids get new mounts and which won't because recently I've been doing a lot of mounting and we're going to talk about that because there are still some orchids left in their original mounts and I would like to clarify my thought process in such a way as to who have I as yet to mount and who is now settled in for the time being because they're doing great. Okay, oh my goodness, my blooming alley is looking marvelous, especially to the right where there's a lot of mounts in bloom, in bud. It's a spectacle. I absolutely love it. I wanted to share that with you, but not only the beautiful blooms, but the timing is perfect because I've been remounting a lot of orchids from the original inorganic mount to organic mounts, doing some unconventional, weird looking hybrids, etc. I still have a few more mounts to go. However, I thought it's best to stop right now and give you my thought process in general, how I came about the decision making process for all the mounts in a consolidated way, as opposed to every single video in the past, I explained why this orchid was chosen for that specific mount. Besides, we have a few more mounts to go that have yet to go on cork. So before that happens, let's look at some blooms. Let's talk about my decision making process. Mounting an orchid is just like repotting an orchid. It is time sensitive, especially if you're talking about an old mount, putting an orchid onto a new mount, etc. It's the same thing as with repotting the moment new roots show up or even better, just before the new roots start growing, guaranteeing minimal damage to any new root system that you want attached to the mount. It is important to get an orchid on a new mount so that she can settle in and all the fiddle is done prior to new roots growing. Now, with my Brassavola perinii, I've missed the mark. Older roots are extending. I'm trying to get in there before new roots even start. I've got two new growths coming. It is on an inorganic mount backed by hob filter material with two layers. The reason I want to change this one, and I should have addressed it first, but I went with the Brassavola flagellaris, <laughs> because that one looks a little bit odd, but I needed to understand how an orchid would behave. Anyway, the reason I want to change that is because of the roots. They're clearly going up and around. I have very low humidity in my climate here in southern Spain. So this orchid, if I want her to develop and grow well in the future, because she was on the brink of death before I put her on this inorganic mount, her recovery has been remarkable, but she needs to go on to cork. That project has yet to happen. It will also be somewhat unconventional, but because I want the orchid to grow and perform and do well and not stall, she's got to go on a bigger mount where she can then stay for the next five, six, seven years. Hopefully that is the goal. Not going on another mount is my gorgeous Tulumnia hoxonia. This orchid needs super high humidity, which I do not have. The hop filter material is serving its purpose super duper well, staying nice and humid. The fine roots can find their way in and through the material. They're coming out the back as well. And if there's a growth that is branching away too far from the mount, I take a bit of fishing line and I encourage it back towards the mount pinning the growth bit by bit. I can reduce the amount of misting on this orchid because of the filter material. So putting her on cork, that would be a far too dry atmosphere. And no, because I have cold and wet winters, I am definitely not putting sphagnum moss on a mount to accommodate this orchid. She's doing absolutely fine on her inorganic mount and she can stay there for a considerable amount of time. When it comes to my huh, Phalaenopsis pulchra, I know, I now call her Phalaenopsis pulchra Dr. Shivago. <laughs> because of her woolly hat, she reminds me of Dr. Shivago. But anyway, this orchid should be in a pot semi-hydro setup with lava rock. But having observed her since she arrived in my collection, her roots go anywhere. They don't go down into a pot. So putting her in a pot, I would be struggling. I can't mist her, etc. Hanging her upside down on a cork mount, perfect. Covered her with hop filter material, and I hope that she will be happy here. 
We briefly addressed Brassavola flagellaris, but a little update since we saw her last. The root tip I was being mindful of, we've still got it. The whole root itself has a branching point, that is awesome. And all I'm looking to see now is touchdown. I would like to see that root tip go down towards the cork and then it's touchdown. That's what I'm looking for. She's growing three new growths beautifully and one of the growths is already chucking out two new roots. She's not a very generous root grower and the length of her roots were starting to come away from the mount that I initially had her on and that is not a good idea. Again, dry climate. I need the roots to be able to hydrate otherwise this orchid is going to stall and not grow as beautifully as she can. While she looks a little ridiculous on her mount, I hope that in two or three years we can see how the plastic has been peeled away bit by bit and then only a little tiny reminder of remnants of plastic will be on the mount. For now, this is working. A candidate that I am not intending to switch to cork. I had thought about it, but it's doing so well with its scrubby pad. That is my Dendrobium exili. The same with my Hawaiara Lava Burst. Both of them are not exactly generous, excessive root growers. So whatever I spray onto the scrubby pad for both of them with their fine roots, oh my goodness, it's working. The Exili is growing beast mode. I had a little bit of issues with her back in 2020 when I thought, do you want to grow upright? Do you want to go pendant? She doesn't care. She grows whatever. It could be upright or pendant. Still, this orchid is doing well on the scrubby pad. I don't need to switch her to a cork mount until maybe in a year or two's time that I do switch her because maybe the scrubby pad then has outlived its purpose and she needs more hydration. But for now, not interfering with her. And Hawiara Lava Burst is beautifully saved on the scrubby pad as well, growing two new growths. Not a busy, busy root grower either. Whatever roots she grows, she grows into the scrubby pad. Happy days. She bloomed for us this year for the first time after four years and she was on the brink of death. So these two can stay as they are. My Dendrobium unicum, however, Yes, we're going to switch that one onto a cork mount. It's not exactly one of the root growers that you were going like, oh my goodness, oh, what a generous root grower. It's not that. I just think that long term, this orchid would be a little happier on a cork mount. And yep, it'll still have some of the plastic on it because I do not intend to remove that. That is part of my support system, how I can pin the orchid to the cork. And I hope that you will be subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed because these mounting videos, every single one is a little bit different. And only until I get around to it, will I know if the plan in my head theoretically actually does the trick. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate your vote of confidence so very much. And also like the video if you're seeing all the variables and varieties. And if this is inspiring you to look beyond what is the norm and think how you can mount your orchids in your environment where maybe you don't have enough humidity or you have a lot of humidity, Either way, there are so many options and variables here that you can work with and maybe adapt into your collection. So a like would also be greatly appreciated. Thank you so, so much. Class of 2019 of Film Keikis, I am not going to mount those either. Not just because they have attached themselves so vigorously to the iron grating, because if I'm ever going to ship Keikis to somebody else, then the inorganic mount is going to be so, so much lighter, reducing the shipping costs. So even though some Keikis are starting to grow new roots, this is the way she's going to be. I don't move her. <laughs> I can't unless I take her off to ship. That's the only time I'm going to pry the roots off the iron grating. She gets treated and misted and watered, etc., etc., right there where she is. But they're looking great, these new growths. I'm loving them. Now we're coming to a series of orchids that pretty much have found their forever home as far as I'm concerned, bar anything going wrong where intervention is needed. One of them is my Dendrobium seraula and the other one is next door is my Dendrobium bensoniae. Now, both cases were a little bit different, but the Seraula was initially pinned on an original mount together with a Nephilim and, yes, a Serratolabium. That would make three orchids on one mount. 
Back in the day, it didn't look ridiculous. It only looked silly because the orchids were so tiny and the mount was so huge. Fast forward five years and the mount had outgrown the size of the orchids. Saraulo was a special case though. If it wasn't for the fact that water splashing on the blooms would wash out the lip, that's how delicate they are. I would have probably left both the Saraula and Ceratilabium on there, let them fight for their space and their light, not have bothered with a very stressful sawing off <laughs> of two orchids while leaving one on and not damage the whole thing. Anyway, now she's on her own mount and her buds that have blasted had already blasted because of cold temperature drop. Had nothing to do with me sawing the orchid off her original mount. But you see here I used wire because there is a piece of the old mount where she is still attached to and all I did was plonk the older part that she's attached to to the new cork in the hopes that this is the least stressful for her. And while she lost probably 60% of the root system in the sawing process, keeping her nice and damp, etc. is helping her do really well at the moment. I'm seeing new roots growing and I'm seeing buds forming. Now, that doesn't mean to say that she's not using the storage in the canes to bloom out, but it remains to be seen if those storage organs start to shrivel and then we can always nip it in the bud, right? So here's the option of mounting with wire to compensate for the weight of the old mount, the piece that is attached, working beautifully. Next to that, you will see a scrubby pad combination for the Dendrobium bensoniae. The reason this orchid had to have a bigger mount is pretty self-explanatory because up until now, I've been looking at roots and judging and guessing and climate, etc. what the roots will require for the orchid to develop well. And well, Bensonia is a beast of an orchid. Love this orchid, not because she grows exceptionally long canes, but she's growing seven new growths and she is a root grower that I have as yet to see in comparison of a single orchid on a mount. Now, you could say, well, the Ophilum is also a very good root grower. Yeah, I can't really discern that because I have so many K keys attached to the main Ophilum mount. So I don't know how many roots one cane would grow, but you can clearly see that the Bensonia is in a league of her own. For that reason, a big, big mount, and I'm also kind of thinking it could have been an even bigger mount, but space is also something I need to take into consideration. Thankfully, the orchids in question I can leave outside with the exception of the first few that we saw at the beginning of the video. So here you can see I have a mount that she came with <laughs> There's a bit of cork still left on her. I never took her off of that. I put her onto a scrubby pad combination mount. I did not take that off. Instead, I used that as my measure of pinning the whole structure onto the cork while it looks a little bit silly and everything could look a little bit more natural and aesthetically pleasing if the plastic wasn't there. It serves the orchid well and I can actually look past that because as long as the orchid is doing well, the humidity buffer is there instead of sphagnum moss. It's the scrubby pad so I'm, I'm okay with what I'm seeing. I don't have to worry about changing moss or anything like that. Besides aeration and everything, it's going really well. I have as yet to see new root growth. Maybe I see one cane starting on new roots, but this is going to be exciting to watch because <laughs> this orchid, I love her. Next to her, we have Dendrobium polyanthum. Ooh, right now coming into bloom, delicious, delicious licorice fragrance in the blooming alley. It is divine, although I don't eat licorice, I like the fragrance. But more on the fragrance of this orchid when we feature her separately. Uh, yeah, this one is going on cork, COC. This one had some canes rotting out. The structure of the canes is a little bit different. They're a little bit more on a succulent kind of texture. So I need to address this orchid and I would like to just cut out whatever I can see of the plastic and then plonk her on her own piece of cork. This video is going to be a fiddle. It has to happen. I still have time. Yes, she's in bloom. I'm not going to do it while she's in bloom, but I have more time with this one because I've got that moss pocket 
that never left her. Actually, it grew a little bit more. From when she arrived, she was so rooted in on this old nasty mount that she was on. I didn't want to like rip her off, so I also cut a little bit around the edge of the mount and then with fishing line, wired that onto the white grating. So you see, I'm, I'm using older parts of the mounts orchids come with and then layering. But I have time with this one because any new roots will first find their way into that moss pocket. This way we can enjoy the blooms to the fullest and then oh, we're going to have to tackle this one because yeah, I look at it, I see all the moss around the base, which is great for the summer, but the last winter has shown me hmm, something's got to change there. And if we're going to be picking moss off, then that's what we're going to do. So stay tuned for the mounting video of this one. But first of all, we will be enjoying those blooms in a separate video. And then of course, little twinkle, decimated little twinkle red fantasy. This is a rescue operation. Sometimes it is just good to take a step back, put pride aside and all good intentions. She was potted in Lekka and self-watering and I knew I could make it work, but I didn't make it work. And for that reason, a very vigorous twinkle now looks like this on a mount. This is an effort to use a mount as a rescue operation. And instead of sphagnum moss, I use my hop filter to cover whatever roots I believe were viable. I can't say whether they really are anymore, but it is time to see if this one can't be rescued by putting her on her own little mount. We shall see, only time will tell, but I knew that I wouldn't be able to rescue her if I tried to pot her up in any other kind of way. So here we go, all eyes on the twinkle, rescue mission using a mount. And finally, a mount that doesn't need to be remounted just yet, but I'm looking and I'm ready to pull the trigger on that one at short notice because my Victoria Regina has been on that mount since she arrived in my collection in 2019, I believe, and then I mounted her and then I put a keiki up on the top of the mount. Oh, that mount is full of moss. It's wonderful. It's lush. The orchid is loving it, growing roots, but it's been a long time. And that piece of cork is not exactly the same quality that I have sourced recently. So if I ever do that, all I'm going to do is just take the piece and then put it on a bit of cork of its own and possibly a slightly larger piece. The Victoria Regina doesn't need such an expansive mount like the Bensonia or the Flagellaris because her roots aren't that rambly. They are all nicely contained. I don't see any roots trying to come off the mount turning aerial. They're all going up and snug into the moss. So it would just be moving a bit of cork onto another bit of cork slightly larger. But there's a little bonus for you if you've stayed to the end. Thank you so, so much. We have a sensational blooming of this Victoria Regina. I, I am blown away, but she's not done yet. She's getting more buds on another cane and then lo and behold, the oldest canes that she came with, that's why they're dangling straight down. They were not grown in my care. The oldest canes, I have two buds on those. I am out of my mind with excitement and cartwheels around the patio have been happening so fast and so furiously. I think I pulled a muscle. <laughs> But it was wonderful to chat through with you, my thought process, my thinking. Maybe you haven't seen all the mounting videos. I will link them all in the description if you want to peruse them, because in those I go into more detail why I use this tying on material as opposed to that tying on material, why I used screws in some cases and not wire, etc. So every mount is a little bit different. For somebody that likes continuity, this video may appear to be a little bit shambles, <laughs> but there's method to my madness. And I appreciate you being here, letting me share that with you. So thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.